True Lies Season 1, Episode 6, Thoughts. This episode is called Working Vacation. So, spoilers for the these first six episodes, as well as the movie. And, yeah, yet another episode I absolutely loved. So, yeah, we open two years before the, the current thing, which, you know, neat little... If you... A little, little writing tip. If you really want to have some kind of like action beat and the story doesn't really justify it, just, you know, flashback. <laughs> so, yeah, that's basically, you know, it sets up the thing with the lucky knife. But let's be honest, he could have just said, this is my lucky knife. And then, you know, it's there because the action of the episode didn't start right away. But, yeah, I liked it. And, yeah, so in this episode we're seeing, you know, Helen is trying to control things more than Harry is used to and comfortable with, but by the end of the episode they do come to, you know, an agreement about it. And, yeah, you know, Dana goes on the vacation and so does Jake. The Taskers have more than one kid? I thought they only had Dana. Seriously, though, I really hope, okay, so there's, what, seven episodes, seven or eight episodes left. I really hope that at some point that character is going to have something. Like, so far, he's basically, he exists so that he can say things to and about Dana that the audience need to hear, and so that she can say things to him that they needed some way for her to, you know, so that she's not monologuing to herself all the time, but just... Yeah, I mean, they managed to, to find something to do with Marie and Luther, so, you know, hopefully they they have something to do with, with Jake. I do like that he apparently packed, like, comic books. I didn't pick up which ones, but, you know, we, we get a very quick, you know, Edgar Wright slash Sam Raimi montage of the, the, of the packing, and... We do see that he packed, I think, two, maybe three comic books. So, yeah, that's a good... That's, you know, that's a plus in my book. Now, the... Let's see... Yeah, the, the you know, Gib with the, let's see, okay, her name is apparently Ava. Too many new characters, but I have them in front of me, so yeah. You know, she's the, the, or wait, is this already? A anyway, you know, there's a, there's a thing between Gib and, and Ava. I'm really glad that they do end up dancing together. You know, he says, uh, you know, don't mix work and what was it? Don't mix work and personal life, which is basically like code for I have not met someone at my work that I want. You know, just like it's a it's a good policy, but it's very very difficult to keep. Yeah, and yeah, we learned that the the place with the for the Mexican spies was compromised. And there are no ATVs at the, the resort, so Dana lied yet again, and Luther is going to go to to save the kids. And the terrorist this episode, I'm, you know, once again really happy that it's a white dude, so, you know, helping to, to there's there's way too much media already that says, oh, you know, the, the, you gotta watch out for those brown people, and it's just, there's plenty of dangerous people all over the world that are white dudes. So, and, yeah, the Hugo Armstrong plays Yen Isak, would be how we would pronounce it. He's Danish, and so am I. So, I'm just really quickly gonna point out that he has way too little of an accent for someone who... I, I know I don't have much of an accent, but I learned English at age 7. So, a, a lot of English at age 7. Watching, you know, 
I think some were American and some were definitely British, you know, cartoons. The All the best ones hadn't been dubbed into Danish yet, so, yeah. And, and the, let's see, so there's the, the, yeah, you know, a, a typical, think of Maz Mikkelsen, Maz Mikkelsen. He, that's the kind of accent a typical Danish person who doesn't learn English until, like, you know, age 10 or 11 or there, thereabouts. You know, that's the kind of accent that you typically have. And the name, two N's in Yen, that's more of a Norwegian thing. And Isaacs, I don't know. I mean, I almost feel like Isaacs, that must be like trying to give him a more international name uh, you know we would say Isaac uh, yeah you know if if I would say it's more realistic for his name to be spelt Yen with one N and then I S A K that would be how we would spell it but but yeah you know I don't mind that you know Mass Mikkelsen also does play a bunch of villains you know, I don't know what it is you see in, in why, why we're so threatening, but, you know, Beats being the victim. So, so no, I, I seriously don't mind it at all. I've, I've, I always like seeing, you know, would have been great if they had actually cast a Danish actor, but, you know, okay, okay just to make absolutely sure, I'm going to look him up real quick. Uh, okay, so it doesn't say right here where he's... From, but but yeah, you know there are. It, anyway, you know, it's it's really really cool when the the seeing you know this kind of representation. You know, it's not like people don't think Denmark and think ooh dangerous. You know, so I don't mind it at all. Now let's see. I like Maria trying to to keep them moving. You know, it's the it's the hike, you know. And what are what are those noises? Fireworks, fireworks. Yes, the the nearby town they're they're celebrating with fireworks. And Helen's gonna handle the detonators. And yeah, you know the so some of the some of the user reviews of this show say that. You know, she's always adjusting these plans and somehow coming up with with better stuff. I really feel like it is still it's it's this thing of you know another set of eyes on it and just kind of he's not he's used to going fairly solo, you know, and yeah, she she's making it so he doesn't have to. I mean, it is pretty ridiculous that you know that the because of the limited time Ava was only able to you know all of the all of the what's it called the the um the detonators are on different frequencies of course Harry's not going to be able to handle all that by himself you know I like the the bit with you know Tomas like is hit and it's the kind of thing like you know, it's just a shoulder wound, and it's not bleeding profusely, so he's going to be okay, but it's his right shoulder. That's his gun arm. He cannot keep firing. You know, he's not going to be able to, you know, fire with any kind of accuracy. So, you know, it's it's a nice, you know, I, I continue to find they, they handle the action well. You know, obviously, it's it's on a budget, so it's not... You know, it's not as big as like a movie or something, but for being on a budget, I think they're doing a they're they're spending the money well. They're they're getting bang for their buck, and yeah, you know, Helen offering to you know saying she'll handle the detonators. You know, basically the the show is saying you know we should, men should listen to women, and that's why a number of misogynists hate it and write angry reviews online. And let's see. yeah, it was it was very exciting. Luther with the Tasker kids in the car, and let's see. yeah, and the the you know the taser pen is gonna be his new 
lucky thing, you know, and apparently she hated him using her toothbrush on their honeymoon, so, you know, they agree neither of us like it when the other person messes with their stuff. And, yeah, the, the, um, and I really appreciate, you know, Helen does admit that she accidentally gave away the, the knife to, to Goodwill, the lucky knife. You know, that's, like, I really appreciate how much the emphasis the show puts on open communication between partners, because for so long, it's this ridiculous, like, there's a, just... The, the, you know, you'll see, you'll see dozens of movies made for men, and it's like action movies where the man never opens about his emotions, never shows any kind of weakness, and then the, all these, all the men who, you know, love watching those movies, the moment that a movie that has some empathy for women shows up, and the man opens up a little, these men will act like, what is going on, you know, the world is ending. It's just, like, if you want to have a healthy relationship with, a, you know, with your partner, you know, we don't have to keep it cishet, it can be a gay relationship, you know, polyamorous, there's, there's, it's extremely important to have open communication, it's just the relationship is not going to last, and certainly it's not going, and or be hap happy and healthy without open communication, and, and the show, you know, and, and, like, I really, you know, the people who say, oh, you know, Helen's so awful, she admits to making mistakes. She, she, you know, she's not some idealized, perfect character who never does anything wrong. Anyway, the, the, let's see, yeah, great to see all the characters dancing at the end. Did think it was a tiny bit cheesy, the camera, like, you know, ma making sure we see everyone dancing there at the end, but, you know, I, yeah, I have it, no notes other, other than that, you know, so the, the, let's see, I feel like there was one other thing that I wanted to, I thought the stuff with Maria and the, the hike, you know, I, I like that, you know, she's, they're actually worried about her because of the, the blood. Meanwhile, you know, she's like, you should see the other guy, you know, but she can't say that because she, she has to keep the cover. And, ah, uh, that might, right, right, yeah, I, I did think it was funny, the thing with, you know, they went to a bar and the, the, what was it, they went to three bars and have not been able to score any beer and, you know, Dana says, I, how was I supposed to know that they would see through a bad Maryland, you know, a, a fake Maryland ID? And, and Jake points out that her Spanish was so bad that she wasn't very convincing and they'll, it just, yeah. I think that might more or less cover, but, but yeah, the, the... Let's see. Yeah, I guess by the end of the episode, the the Tasker kids still think that those were just the cops, and Luther just had to, you know, get kind of, you know, he wanted to go wild a little to to escape from the cops. Ah, uh, I swear, there's something else that I'm. Missing, but what? In oh, right, right. Here it is. Um, yeah. So the thing with the the conf, you know, yeah, the co conflict between Helen and Harry in this episode, you know, it is fairly stereotypical, kind of this thing of you know, men aren't as well organized as women, and kind of you know, men men get annoyed when women help the the with the organizing. So you know, it would be great if it was. Slightly more, you know, progressive than that, but at least it is saying that the fact that, you know, it, it acknowledges that the, you know, 
yeah, the women who try to organize, they, you know, they mean well. Sometimes they might make mistakes, but they are trying to, to help, you know. So if you listen to some misogynists, it's like women just like throwing things away that men like. Like, it's just, I mean, you know, as usual, I'm not saying that all women are perfect, but to say that women just generally like throwing things away that are important to men like seriously just I get it your mom threw away some of your toys now can you please grow up it's not a general thing it's not a it's not a woman thing it's a parent thing you know sometimes parents throw away stuff that you know you as a, a child or teenager would like to keep that's just, you know, it, it's not a general thing that, that all women do. And, you know, the, the episode does also acknowledge, you know, Harry does feel like he is organized. He does feel like, he, you know, because he knows where the stuff he, you know, yeah, he knows where things are kind of thing. And the, the... Yeah, I thought it worked the the thing with you know, she puts the the taser pen in the in the front pouch where the lucky knife usually goes which you know does also, you know, immediately you think back to the flashback. Oh right, you know, he he reached in, he got the knife there. And and at the end he folded it and put it back in the, in that pouch. So but yeah, you know, he doesn't even notice she you know, he's he's busy focusing on the conversation and yeah basically the the you know that that is a, a that's again the the stereotype you know that that women over prepare stuff for for the men in their lives and the the man ends up oh wow I didn't even realize she, she put that here but no I, I now I need it you know kind of thing so you know it's still, you know, it's somewhat cishet, but at least it's not pure white, you know, there is diversity, both in, in casting and, like, some of the, some of the ideas are, you know, not just what, what white people think or, or like, and let's see, right, and, and, you know, whenever you say it's great that this has a diverse cast, you have, you know, <sighs> insecure, you know, fr fragile white people saying, oh, but, you know, they should just cast the most talented people. This does have, you know, maybe it sometimes happens, but it's not the the norm for untalented people to be cast if it's not white people being cast. They still look for the most talented person. And, yeah, I would say, you know, I'm, I'm not sure... There, no, there hasn't really been anyone in these six episodes where it felt like, okay, that person was just cast to, like, fill a quota or something. You know, everyone, like, not everybody likes the style of acting, but it's, you know, somewhat like sitcom acting. And, yeah, you know, it's not multi-camera, but a lot of the situations are, like, sitcom, and the same was true for the movie, you know, I think fundamentally it's a pretty ridiculous concept that the, the you know the the wife would end up uh, the, the wife of a, a spy would end up partaking in in these incredibly dangerous spy you know so so just yeah now yes that is everything so yeah looking forward to next episode and i did hear recently uh it looks like it will not get renewed for a second season, and, you know, I, I would like to see more than one season, but the, the, you know, there's a bunch of stuff these days that only get one season, and, you know, it is a, it's not a very popular show. A lot of the people, yeah, right now it's sitting at a 5.1 on IMDb. And yes, 15.2% of votes are 10s, but 14.4 are 1s, which is just absurd. Like, no matter how much you don't think this is 
that good, giving it a one, like that suggests that everything about it is bad, or that the the weaknesses so greatly outweigh the strengths. Like, I don't know how anyone gives this less than a five. That really seems like review bombing to me. But but yeah, that's why we're not getting another season. You know, I'm hoping that I hope it's not going to hurt the careers because these are clearly very talented people. I basically the only person let's see there's yeah so so you have you know Ginger Gonzaga who I know from She-Hulk and then you have Beverly D'Angelo uh, you know m most of the most of the people on this show are not ones that I know from anything else but yeah like I would definitely be very happy to see Steve Howey who plays Harry and something else Michael Gorman, who plays Lutheran, Erica Hernandez, who plays Maria. I'd like to see them in other stuff. Uh, you know, I feel bad for Lucas J, who plays Jake. He hasn't really gotten much of a chance to prove himself. I do think Annabella Didion as Dana does well. Uh, Omar Benson Miller as Gib. Yeah, you know, the... the The, um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, that is it. I am out of bad sign-offs, so I'm just gonna end the video with that one.